Bill and Shannon Ferguson were in their pasture on the evening of April 30, 1986, waiting for a mare to foal. Sometime before 10 p.m., they saw a truck pull over near a gate to the adjacent Triple Creek Ranch. They saw someone get out of the truck, heard a chain rattle on the gate, and saw the truck go through the gate and onto the ranch. Other evidence showed that the original chain had been cut and a new lock had been placed on the gate. The truck's headlights were off, but Mrs. Ferguson noticed an unusual brake light pattern on the truck. Mrs. Ferguson went to the barn and called the Triple Creek Ranch. She spoke to the wife of Jim Hazelton, the ranch manager, and told her that a burglary might be taking place because a truck had entered the ranch with its lights off. Mrs. Hazelton told Mrs. Ferguson that her husband would be right out. Fifteen minutes later, the Ferguson saw Triple Creek Ranch Manager Jim Hazelton's truck appear at the same gate. Hazelton was unable to enter the ranch through that gate, so he backed up and entered the ranch from another location. Eventually the Fergusons heard Hazelton's truck stop. When they heard a gunshot, Mrs. Ferguson went back to the barn to call the Walker County Sheriff's Department and Mrs. Hazelton. While Mrs. Ferguson was gone, Mr. Ferguson remained in the pasture. Several minutes after the first gunshot, Mr. Ferguson heard several shots fired in rapid succession. After a brief silence, Mr. Ferguson heard someone plead for his life. The pleas were silenced by two more shots. When the law enforcement officials arrived, they discovered the bodies of Jim Hazelton and his brother-in-law, Peter Sparagana. Mrs. Hazelton was Peter's sister. Walker County Deputy Sheriff Alan McCandles saw a truck matching Shannon Ferguson's description of the truck driven by the intruders in Gary James Johnson's pasture after the shootings. And he saw Johnson driving the truck numerous times. Another law enforcement officer testified that two of the lights on the back of Johnson's truck were removed in the two weeks after the murders. Johnson and his brother Terry Dell Johnson were arrested for the murders two years later. Three of Johnson's brothers, Tracy, Randy, and Ricky, testified for the state at trial. Tracy testified that Johnson came to Missouri during the fall of 1986, returned Tracy's 44 caliber pistol and asked Tracy to destroy it because the gun had been used in a double murder in which Johnson and another brother, Terry, participated. Ricky testified that, during that same visit to Missouri, Johnson was in possession of the 44 caliber pistol, he admitted killing one man with the gun, and he said that he and Terry also killed a second man. A state firearms examiner later identified a bullet fragment retrieved from Hazelton's body as having been fired from the same 44 caliber pistol that Johnson returned to Tracy. Randy testified that Johnson told him that Johnson and Terry were out at the Triple Creek to steal a welder, tires, livestock feed and other items when two men got the drop on them. While Terry distracted them, Johnson shot one of the men. Johnson and Terry caught the other man, brought him back to the barn, made him kneel, and tied his hands behind his back. And while the second man pleaded for mercy, Johnson shoved the gun in his mouth. The medical examiner testified that Jim Hazelton died from a contact bullet wound to the mouth. Randy testified that Johnson told him the two men were killed because dead mean don't talk. The defense called Johnson's brother, Terry, as a witness. Terry testified that Gary Johnson killed both of the victims. 
He testified that his brother Gary's favorite expression was kill them all. Let God sort them out. The defense also presented testimony from two inmates in the Walker County Jail that Terry Johnson told them that he had killed both of the victims. At the penalty phase of the trial, the state presented evidence that Johnson shot and killed a neighbor's dog from a distance of 75 to 100 yards. While the dog was standing a few feet from the neighbor, the state also presented evidence that Johnson was carrying a loaded handgun when he was arrested for the murders. Johnson's uncle testified for the defense at the penalty phase that he had never seen Johnson act violently. Johnson's former boss and a co-worker testified that Johnson was hard-working, respectful, and non-violent. Johnson's ex-wife testified that Johnson was never violent toward their children, and never drank or used drugs. The jury found that Johnson had acted deliberately and with a reasonable expectation that death would result, and that it was probable that Johnson would commit future acts of criminal violence that constitute a continuing threat to society. The trial court sentenced to Johnson to death. Co-defendant Terry Dell Johnson was convicted of murder and sentenced to 99 years after testifying against his brother and accepting a plea bargain to avoid a death sentence. A Walker County jury sentenced Johnson to death in August 1988 for the murders of Peter Sparagana, 23, and James Hazelton, 28 at the Triple Creek Ranch. Located about 10 miles west of Huntsville off State Highway 30. After more than 20 years on death row, convicted murderer Gary Johnson was executed, for the shooting deaths of two men at a Huntsville area ranch in 1986. Johnson, 59, the second to die by lethal injection in Texas that year was pronounced dead by Texas Department of Criminal Justice officials at 6.26 p.m. on the 12th of January 2010. Just 11 minutes after the lethal dose began at 6.15 p.m. Hazelton's brother, George, was the only family member to observe Johnson's execution standing just a few feet away and watching through a glass window in silence. At first declining offers to make a last statement, Johnson directed his comments to family members and friends in the personal witness room, including his daughter, a brother and sister-in-law and friends. Tell my family goodbye, he said. You tell the rest of them what they did was wrong for letting me fall for what they did. I never done anything in my life to anybody. Those are his last words. Thank you for watching Death Row.